oh, tube goodness a few me. years over there. Stop, now we've stop, also got a couple watching. of guys. One of the guys, if you could step forward here. All the guys, and you need to. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, mate. Get out of here. <laughs> now these fellas made a big effort experience. as well. You've got to pan down to have a look at his legs, mate. <laughs> He's actually not even from Australia, but he's made a great effort. Where are you from, mate? I'm from Illinois, mate, in the middle of the U.S. <laughs> What's your name? Kurt's my name. Kurt is the name, and Kurt's the game. All right, well, here's, what's your name, mate? Thanks, Kurt. Uh, <laughs> Luke from Manly. Luke G'day. from Manly, a real Aussie. G'day, guys. All everyone back at the grill. Baz, Mum, Dad. <laughs> well, g'day. <laughs> well, it's an incredible night, as you can tell. We've got all all the Aussies here. I, I told them, you know, we've done this for 13 years. One year we even lost lost yeah. the uh, the track from uh, from Australia, actually, Tim. But tonight, Tim, Tim, um, Drew, how many people you, are over you... there? Oh, we've got about 115,000, tell them, at Flemington Racecourse, about 115,000, we think. We haven't got an official well, crowd that's, yet. That's not too dusty. <laughs> I, I, I've been told that we have to show you the rest of the girls because they're all dying to say hello to Mum, of course, as you can imagine. Listen, Drew, haven't you got a fashion? Have you got a fashions in the club? Yeah, we've got, got fashions in the got field, mate. Oh, okay, there well, you go. Through, come yeah. through. They call me love. They're getting a bit excited, as you can tell. We're trying to be authentic. We're trying now, to be me. authentic as possible. The bets are on here. What about the favourite? I reckon uh, Yippee IO. It's up from Scone as well, Tim. Yeah, Yippee IO. There's some money around for just about everything in the cup, mate. Let me tell you, I've never heard so many tips in my life as this year. I think anything can win this one. Yeah, my mum called me. She reckons it was a special. Which horse are you going for, darling? I'm going for Lightning Arrow. Lightning Arrow, they reckon, over here, mate. How about Drew? You, how many? Yippee yo yo! Definitely yippee yo yo! Well, it's out of yodels. There's a lady over here who actually makes Australian meat pies in New York. Hi, Julie. Hello. Hello. So, what was your inspiration oh, for that we'll hat today? To it, will we? yeah. uh, not being in Melbourne, just missing it and uh, and being here. I love it. We all miss it over here, Tim. We all wish we were there, but you know we're having we're trying our best over here, mate. Well, Drew, thank you. It was terrific of you to join us. Give them all a big hug and kiss for us, and tell them to enjoy the Melbourne Cup. It's uh, about an hour and ten minutes away, so try and make it that far. You betcha, mate. We'll say goodbye. Wave goodbye to my mum. Yeah, good on you. There they go. Thanks, Tim. Well, we, thanks, mate. See you. We keep telling you, our coverage goes to 160 countries and territories. That's just one of them. We'll take a break. Melbourne Cup, a little more than an hour away. And we're back from flitting around the world. There's the current favourite for the Melbourne Cup, Cup Star Way. Looking very relaxed there. I tell you what, everybody wants to tip you something this year. Coco Cabana, the gay waterhouse horse, has been tipped by a lot of people. Now, if she does win it, that would be history. Only 11 mares have won the Melbourne Cup since 1861, only four since 1965. It would be an achievement, wouldn't it? All right. Well, this year, once again, the biggest stable in the world has its sights set on the Melbourne Cup. And for one member of the Godolphin team in particular, victory would be very sweet indeed. It's the biggest racing operation on earth. And for the third successive year, Sheikh Mohammed's Godolphin stable is looking to walk away with the Melbourne Cup. Brad Mazzato is Godolphin's travelling head lad. He's a very dedicated owner and he's very ambitious. So uh, if anyone can win their cup in time, it'll be Sheikh Mohammed. And the Sheikh is one person to whom the $2 million first prize would be almost immaterial. But the prestige of such a win? Inestimable. When uh, old Vic won the Irish Derby, he put an all-weather gallop in for the Curro trainers. So that took up most of the prize money. Uh, Sheikh Mac Toom won the French Guineas four years ago, gave the money to charity. So money's got nothing to do with it, it's just the prestige. 
This year, the stable sent three horses. Evil Empire fell by the wayside after flopping in the Herbert Power Stakes, and all the way failed to live up to his name when he ran down the track in the Caulfield Cup. That means this fellow, five-year-old gelding Lightning Arrow, will be carrying the famous Royal Blue Silks in the Cup. We purchased him out of John Dunlop's Arundel Stables. Uh, we originally bought him to race over the winter in Dubai, but we took charge of the horse earlier than we expected. So he had a Melbourne Cup entry, so we thought we'd add him to our team as it was weaker than the past two years. After faithful son blazed the trail when seventh in the 98 Cup, Godolphin had high hopes last year, only to have outstanding stayer Kaif Tara go amiss just a week before the big race. No one will ever know, but he was a great chance and he deserved to be favoured for the race, but who knows. But then, their second stringer, Central Park, almost an afterthought entrant, came within just a half a length of glory. The people have planned these, the Melbourne Cup preparation for 18 months, whereas ours with Central Park was just an afterthought because our first string horse was, uh, he broke down and went by the wayside. Bradley Mazzato was like every other Australian. The boy from Newcastle says his first recollections of the Melbourne Cup go way back. Sitting in primary school in the class, three o'clock rolled around, the teachers wheeled the TV in, all the kids sat down, quiet, we watched the Cup and then the TV was rolled out. From that day on, everyone would make sure they were home from school in time to watch the Melbourne Cup. And so a victory at Flemington, while no doubt sweet for Godolphin, would be even more so in the life of Brad Mazzato. We could win the next 15 English derbies. It wouldn't matter. As long as we won one Melbourne Cup, I'd be more than happy. Yes, it's true. They don't send their horses over here just to go around. They come to win the Foster's Melbourne Cup, now one of the great races in the world. I mentioned the four mares only to win the Cup since 1965. There was a female jockey too, Marie Linden from New Zealand, who rode back in 87, a horse called Argonaut Style, Peter Donegan. So I guess history is a bit against the ladies winning the Cup. Well, I've already said, Tim, if Coco Cabana does win, then I'm going to have to have my running shoes on because I'll be chasing Gay Waterhouse all over the mountain yard. You and me both, yeah. Yeah, um, and it's going to be a great thing for her if she does. She's had a bit of a lean trot in Melbourne, but uh, the horse is tuned to the minute and looks really fit going into today, yes, Jen. Yes, yes, definitely a rough chance in the race. OK, one to go. The Great Western, they're in the mountain yard here, and my little buddy beside me is a bit nervous, and there excited. are a few other people a bit <laughs> nervous, and we'll come to that in a moment. But first of all, one night's upon us, Karen McAvoy, the rider for Peter Hayes at Flemington. Well, it was a fair effort at Caulfield by Knights Upon Us, and she probably had a chance to run on there. This is a bit easier for her. It's probably D-Day, and uh, she gets a chance. Can Bill Ball break through number two? Damien Oliver, the rider for Russell Cameron. Enormous effort at Caulfield last start, where she jumped out the barrier, she tried to buck, and she still managed to finish third. The start before that was quite good, too, at Mooney Valley, but she's yet to win a race, but I can't rule her out. She's a chance. Three Bella Dixon, Craig Williams, the rider for Ray Taylor. Um, at Morpherville, she, she sat outside the lead and she showed a good turn of foot towards the end of that race and, and got the prize money there. Awkwardly drawn in barrier 16 and I'd say a place chance for Balediction. Five operators, Darren Gouchy won the last race, takes the ride here for John Hawkes. Well, this horse didn't handle the slow um, at its last start, so, uh, sorry, two starts ago at Mooney Valley, but uh, at Caulfield, put in a fair effort there and probably needs to just lift a little bit for this race, I'd say place chance. Another of the horse runners, number seven, Harpy, Brett Preble is the rider here. Set outside the lead last start and really no excuses at Caulfield. From Barrier 17, another horse that uh, probably be ridden back from there and a place chance in the race. And it's in the second set of colours there, as you can see, in the black with the cerise cap. Number eight, Flying Spy. Stephen Baster for Peter Hayes. I think Flying Spice might be suited by the good pace here, Peter. Um, she's, she's definitely coming into this race with a bit of a chance as well. Nicely drawn in barrier six and Stephen Baster to run. Nine jet shoes, Larry Cassidy for John Size. They got clear a little bit too late at Warwick Farm and then came out and won at Can Canterbury at her next start. She's awkwardly drawn as well in barrier 15. I'd give her a place chance in this. And I sincerely hope if you're back number 14, something funny, that the horse is not as nervous as the owners. <laughs> Otherwise, it may as well come back to the bird cup because they are shivering they and it's are. not even cold. Look at her, she's beautiful, isn't she? She's yeah, lovely. She's, she's a terrific filly, this one. Yep. Uh, we're really excited about her. Um, my, my daughter actually designed those colours, but she's got a terrific chance. She's run, won three out of four. Good luck, Jen. Let's Thank have you. a look at the totes now for race seven, the Great Western, as they go to the barrier. We'll check them out right across Australia with Dan Maliki. And it's Belle Ball, the clear favourite at $3.70. Knights Upon Us at uh, pretty good odds. So is Belle Addiction. 
down to eight flying spice at five dollars ninety jet shoes number nine at nine dollars and eighty cents for the win and on the second page of runners something funny clearly the most fancy there at seven dollars and apart from it juno beach number 11 at twenty five dollars as they go to the gates for race seven pete do so dan to the far side of the track at the 1400 we'll come back to flemington shortly as we do the preparations for the melbourne cup continue our unicorn is one of the outsiders in the race today matthew gatt will take his first ride in the melbourne cup will he be successful well the last minute preparations are now being completed for him and the rest of the cup field back to flemington for race seven after this are being filled here for the Great Western. Roy Higgins with his last minute thoughts. Just quickly, I went with the two bell ball. Gets a chance to break a maiden status here. Others I placed in were 7, 14 and 8. 2, 7, 14 and 8 for race 7. Be one before the biggie. Roy Higgins courtesy of Sport 927. They're just about ready to go. Let's see how Gary Willits assessed them as they went to the far side of the track. Yes, well I like the two but it's still it. a maiden. The one I took my eye was the one, Knights Upon Us to be ridden by Karen McAvoy trained by Peter Hayes and the other one of Peter Hayes is Flying Spice number eight both look very well Thank tough you, race Riders. Harpies ready they're all set to go and they're on their way now Oh Blue Angel a bit slow to begin Knights Upon Us missed the start and Juno Beach is a snag back at the tail end of the field Miss Thunderstood jump well so did Operetta's looking for the lead Jet Shoes is up there so is Balediction but it's wider out also pushing through in between runners now was Bell Ball and Wataroa starting to surge through them. Sinachi's in the pink colours about seventh on the rails. Two lengths away the grey something funny than O Blue Angel who ends up about midfield. Next came Storm at Midnight. A length and a half to Flying Spice. Back on the fence as Knights upon us. Trying to save some ground after missing the start. Harpy three deep. A length and a half for Trill. And then Rustic Draw on the inside and Juno Beach around it. Last about ten lengths off the lead. 700 metres to go. And it's Operetta's narrowly in front from Jet Shoes and Valediction three out. A length and a half away in fourth position. Wataroa between Bell Ball three deep and Miss Thunder stood back on the rails. Then O Blue Angel threading a passage through from Sinachi. The grey out very wide now. Something funny from Knights Upon Us who's down towards the rails. Still making up a bit of ground as Wataroa dropped out of it and Batril running on fairly well. It's Operetta's Jet Shoes tackled by Bell Ball. O Blue Angel running on and then came Sinachi. Benediction, Batril and Flying Spice from well back. Bell Ball hit the lead. O Blue Angel's coming out after it. Then Sinachi. Flying Spice and a it's O Blue Angel going up to Bell Ball with 100 left to go. O Blue Angel drew a half a length in front of Bell Ball and O Blue Angel wins it. Drawing clear. Bell Ball another minor placing. Third Sinachi. Then Flying Spice Harpy Batril. Next time was Storm at Midnight. Then came Operettas and Jet Shoes from Rustic Draw. Valediction Miss Thunder stood nights upon us. And then something funny Juno Beach and Wataroa dropped right out of it at the tail of the field. O Blue Angel ridden by Darren Beedman. Trained by Ron Moore, and Ron used to come uh, train at Ballarat. Uh, the one that was in trouble, Dan, was six Wataroa. The saddle seemed to slip on out about oh, a 1,000 from home, and I noticed Neville Wilson was in all sorts of bother. But uh, can't take any for uh, There's the head on here. And the numbers are 12, 2, and 15. The uh, Old Blue Angel. Going up to Bell Ball here. I thought Bell Ball was going to kick back and hold on. That's Damien Oliver, three off the inside rail. The blue and the red cap. And the one with the green blinkers on was Oak Blue Angel. And I've sorted out, fought it out. I thought Sinachi was going to uh, get to them here, but these two have got away again. But Bell Ball, she just can't win one. I think that's what, about six seconds, is it? Yeah, that's. Uh, she's had seven starts, five seconds yeah. now into third, and she was there. But Oblu Angel had a better run, obviously. Yeah. was strong in the end. Uh, oh, Sinachi yeah. did a pretty good job for third, and the rest of them battled on. Flying Spice and Harpy both made up a little bit of ground. Yeah. Knights Upon Us missed the start, probably into the penny section for it. Yeah. Ended up on the rails, didn't do a lot, and uh, a perfect Beedman ride. Reminiscent of those uh, saintly and Kingston rule rides, yes. saving they're a they're, lot of ground. I think they're a bit better than our Blue An Angel. And it's paid good odds again, so uh, the bookies will continue to smile, and if you backed it yourself, you'll be expecting odds of in excess of about $33, so another big price result. There's the uh, result from first to last, so you can find out where your uh, horse finished up in the run. Here's John Letts with an interview with a man he's done plenty of times before, Darren Beedman. Yeah, Darren Beedman, Darren was just telling me, boys, that uh, through the race that uh, Neville Wilson, he was in front of him, and actually the saddle's with Darren. Can you give us the story? 
Yeah, he was in awful trouble in, in up in front of me about three lengths, and the boys in front of me, Chrissy Munson and Damien, they were a bit perplexed by it all, and uh, I was just getting off their break and getting the runs when they were going. You think this helped you win the race? Well, she looked pretty strong at the finish anyway, didn't she? She did, yeah. Just, it just passed away for me around the corner and got out at the right time, and it was a good, strong win, and it was good for Ronnie Moore to come back to his local town and win the big one, win a good race on Melbourne Cup Day. It was, Darren, and also we, we remember Ronnie Moore as a champion jumping jockey, uh, just a steeple case and hurdle jockey, and uh, to come back and win one of the feature flat races over the Melbourne Cup carnivals, uh, uh, certainly uh, exciting for him. Yeah, and uh, his, wife, I guess his wife was telling me that he just keeps running into old faces and it was a bit late getting into the enclosure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we had a little bit of trouble with him, but I think we'll forgive him. Congratulations, Darren. Thanks, John. Thanks very much to John Letts, and yes, just shutting down here to Ron Morn. Ron, congratulations, you've gone from Ballarat up to the Sunshine. It's obviously paying dividends for you and the horses. Yeah, the Toowoomba Cuddy's come good today. <laughs> that was a good win, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it's a horse we've always liked, and uh, she deserved a chance. She come as a travel mate, a Keffel, and we might have won that too with a bit of luck. So a little bush battle as I bobbed up with one or two. Yeah, he ran a good race in uh, third place in the other day, Careful. Now, um, what about going into the race? Were you confident? Uh, you're oh. coming off a win at Doombin to Flemington on Melbourne Cup Day. Yeah, she should have won the last two up there, and it's always had an extra gear at this horse, and today was uh, one of the first times she's had a lazy run and uh, attacked at the right end, so uh, Flemington put on the races for Phillies, and so we, had, uh, we couldn't get a Phillies race in Brisbane, so we brought her here and good result, thanks. The atmosphere doesn't get much better than half past two on Melbourne Cup Day. Well done, Ron. Well, I might never have a run in the Melbourne Cup, but at least I won the race before the Melbourne Cup. Good on you, mate. Well done. Thank you. Ron Moore, the winning trainer. You can see it is a great thrill for him winning the race before the Melbourne Cup. And so, as this little filly comes back, the way is paved now for the running of the great race. O Blue Angel is the winner, ridden by Darren Biedman. And in this great atmosphere here at Flemington, there is the city of Melbourne. Doesn't she look a picture today on a grand day? That shot from the Hertz blimp looking down over the central business district. And there won't be too much activity going on there at the moment. There won't be an awful lot of activity anywhere in Australia in around 50 minutes' time. The Foster's Melbourne Cup of 2000 is getting closer. More details on the Great Western when we come back. Welcome back to Flemington. We're after correct weight for the Great Western. And then, my friends, less than 45 minutes for the Melbourne Cup. Thank you, Mr Gleeson. Correct weight there. The Melbourne Cup, of course, for first prize is worth $2 million. For the dividends on race seven, though, a bit less than that, here's Danny Malecki. Thank you, Tim. 33.50, Old Blue Angel, $8 uh, for the place. A little bit shorter in its home state, Queensland, 31.60. Bell Bull, second, 160, and Sinatra at very good value again, third, $9.30. Quinella paid 62.80, Exacta, 148.90. Trifecta, 4,059.40, running double on a pair of 12s. You wouldn't see that happen too often. 12 and 12, $790 and uh, 50 cents. So another one the bookies were cheering for, Tim, in race seven at $33 plus on Super Tab. Timothy, you're on. Oh, sorry, guys. Yes, I'm, you're on. I'm, you're on. Yeah, I know. Sorry, I was just Go dreaming. On. Just keeping an eye on the bookmakers' boards, and I can tell you that that money has continued to come for Brew down the bottom. When I walked on course, it was certainly 20 to one. You could even get 25s with one bookmaker. Due to the uh, rules of racing, I can't now tell you what that price is, but it is just on double figures. Also, good money for number two, Far Cry. Now, this is one of the overseas horses. It's been back throughout the day, and it is also a double figure odds. But heading the market, Carpstad way just ahead of Dyer Drive and Freemason. Bohemoth is friendless at the moment, but at the moment, as I said, the favourite is Carpstad way. The best two back recently are Far Cry and Brew. Good on you, Tim. Tim Gossage in the betting ring. I don't blame Tim for not being able to hear because it is just a cacophony of noise all around us, Jen, as the Melbourne Cup draws closer, as we take a look at the tight figures all around Australia. Tell us what's going to win the Cup. Well, I'll try to, Peter, but i tell you what, it's been a very hard day so far, hasn't it? Yeah. I'm going for number two, Far Cry. I really think this horse can go very well. He's got the best distance form in the race, having won four out of seven at the 3,200 metres. And he's a very tough stayer. If he gets a nice run, he's going to be extremely 
extremely hard to beat. Number five, Free Mason, has done everything right. He's been nursed along, and I think he'll run out the two mile quite strongly. I think he's got a good chance. And number four, Diatribe, hard to go past him, isn't it, because of his corporeal cup form, and that's held up very well over the last few years. There are the top selections, Jen Far Cry, Diatribe from Richard. Let's see, he's gone for Far Cry, and then myself, Dan, and Gary have all gone for Karpstad Way, the one that they have tried early in the day. Let's see what the Strathfield race predictor has come up with. And number 17, well, here's a surprise, number 17, Hill of Grace, which is showing huge odds on the tape, around about $32 on Super Tap at the moment, to beat number 13, Bohemia, and number 5, which is Freemason. So if that trifecta gets up, it will pay the national debt or pretty close to it. 17, 13 and 5 from the Strathfield race predictor prior to the running of the Foster's Melbourne Cup race 8 and it is due to commence at 20 minutes after 3. We don't get a chance to get away too often from the mounting guard, Jen, but I've spoken to Roy Higgins and a few people who've been around the place and Roy reckons there's no question there are way over 100,000 people and getting close to a record I here. I would be very surprised if there's not, Peter. It's a fantastic crowd and a great day for it too. Well, it's time to head to the presentation after the running of race 7 this afternoon and for the presentation after the Great Western, the executive General Manager of South Corp Wines, Mr. Thomas Park. Thank you. Chairman, committee, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me enormous pleasure to be able to present the Great Western Trophy here today. And I'd like to congratulate the Victorian Racing Club on another brilliant spring carnival. Sepult and its Great Western brand have been a long-standing part of this success. And we are proud to continue the sponsorship of the Great Western, which is the traditional lead-up race to the Melbourne Cup. The Sepult Sparkling Wine Portfolio is Australia's most loved. From the time-honored Great Western to the distinguished and internationally recognized sparkling wine of Salinger. Sepult has enjoyed a wonderful association with horse racing in Australia. For over 20 years, on this special day, patrons have chosen to celebrate with one of Australia's leading sparkling wines, Great Western. And I have no doubt that it's part of everybody's celebration here today. In previous years, we've seen some outstanding winners of this race, and this year's winner is no exception. I'd like to congratulate O Blue Angel, who came in at some terrific odds, on a thrilling win today, superbly ridden by Darren Biedman and trained by Rod Mon from his Queensland connection. All of us from Sepult now take great pleasure in presenting this year's Great Western Trophy to Karen Mon, who will be accepting for the owners. And we'll give her this lovely bottle of Great Western Champagne. And I'm sure the owners will love sampling that later on this afternoon. The Great Western, always the lead up to the Melbourne Cup for 20 years. Janet's getting closer. It sure is. Oh, and this uh, is the fantastic. excitement is just fantastic around the mounting yard, I can tell you. It is really, really good. I was hoping to get that bottle of Great Western champagne then, but uh, our filly was a bit disappointed. Oh, never, never mind. mind. Never there's mind. always next time. That's right. And there's always the next race. It's the Great One, the Foster's Melbourne Cup, 20 minutes after three. Tim Webster, around right about 40 minutes away from now. I can't wait either. You two just can't. Calm down, keep away from the champagne. You've got two hours and 20 minutes to go. We All right, will. talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Peter Donegan and Jenny Chapman. Now, our fashion design is always a highlight of uh, Melbourne Cup Week, the carnival. Who better to do it than Lynn Talbot? And the two of them have never looked any better. Well, Tim, it's getting very rowdy down here on the members' lawn, let me tell you. But that's just the way it happens on Cup Day. I have two of our feature designers standing with me with their Cup Day creations. And, uh, of course, they're worn by our beautiful models here. Let me firstly introduce you to our first designer, Lisa Gorman, and she represents the very well-known label, Mariana Hardwick. Hello to you. Now, can you describe this beautiful outfit in, what can I describe it as, gelati pink? It is, yes. Candy's wearing a bias cut silk Georgette dress today over a bias cut silk chamoose slip with an asymmetrical hemline and frill detail. Let me see this beautiful bag. Her bag is by Spencer and Rutherford. And her headpiece today is by Penny Gallo, exclusively for Mariana Hardwick, and is more or less a modern take on a cocktail hat. Yes, yeah, so you've gone uh, the hairpiece instead of the hat. We have this year, yeah. Terrific. 
Patrick, well done. And our second feature designer, Paul Anthony. And uh, you have this beautiful piece here in your signature vintage fabrics. And, um, it's actually an Armani fabric from about 20 years ago, which I just picked up somewhere. And um, what I've done is uh, cut it into separate panels and applied some lace, some French lace. Um, the bag is actually made out of an old hat from the 50s that I found as well. And um, the hat is based on a forage cap from the Second World War. So where do you find these beautiful old fabrics from? Uh, there are people that deal in that type of fabric in Melbourne and I do have people that spot things for me and a hell of a lot of op shopping as well. So Tim, two fantastic different looks, very diverse. And of course our third feature designer today is Jenny Ho who had the difficult challenge of dressing me with this uh, belly bump here and she's done a great job. So the home viewers, if you want to play armchair fashion critique, off you go. You have the choice of three very beautiful cup day designs to choose from. Well, it might have been a difficult job, but the result is fabulous. Lynn Talbot and the impending looking absolutely fantastic. Gee, there's a huge crowd here. We've got to go. On the other side, all the tension and excitement of the Melbourne Cup of 2000.